This video will make your film photos 10 times more sharp. Sometimes photographers want to have a photo that's out of focus or kind of blurry, but for the most part, it's ideal to make a picture as sharp as possible. So I've put together four steps that'll take your photos from mediocre to super sharp. There are a lot of aspects that come into taking a sharp picture, and I'll talk about your film stock a little bit later. But for now, I've got something that might surprise you a little bit. Everyone knows how aperture works. At a wide aperture like 1.8, your subject will be in focus and everything behind it will be out of focus. At a aperture like f22 that's very small, everything will actually be in focus. But what might be surprising is that for most lenses, the aperture f8 is generally the sharpest. If you're using an aperture that's much lower, then obviously you get more shallow depth of field, but it's using less of your lens element to take the photo. And any higher, there can be defects and diffraction. Now, I'm not gonna suggest to use medium format cameras in this video because I want the steps to be much simpler and more easy to apply, but it's much easier to go to a higher aperture and get a lot more detail from a medium format camera. So just remember, while you're shooting 35 millimeter, an aperture of f8 to maybe f10 is probably the sharpest you'll get. Now this is a really great way of making sure you get really sharp shots, but you need to take it to the next level by learning this next phase. When you take a photograph, any small movement can have an almost imperceptible effect on the final image. These very tiny movements can have an impact on the overall clarity of the shot. Now there are two ways to combat this, but it's completely situational. So I'll give you both. First of all, if you're shooting on the move, then you'll wanna try and have a higher shutter speed. Something that's maybe 500th of a second or higher. Perhaps it could be a little bit lower, but the slower that it is, the more likely you are to see that movement in your image. Otherwise, if you're not on the move, then you'll wanna shoot with a tripod with a shutter release. This will pretty much eliminate any movement whatsoever. And on a tripod, your shutter speed won't really matter unless you're actually trying to capture movement in your image. Okay, so these tips will have already taken your pictures from being not very clear at all to being super sharp, but I've got two more really important things that come into play. When I first started shooting film photography, all I shot on was Kodak Color Plus. And to be honest, I took some really good shots over that time. If all you can afford is Kodak Color Plus or Kodak Gold, then you should definitely shoot those film stocks because shooting something is better than shooting nothing at all. However, if you're on the quest to shoot the sharpest shots possible, then you're gonna need a more premium film stock. I'm gonna suggest a few ideal film stocks for this kind of thing. These are only color film stocks, by the way. Kodak Portrait 400 is good because it's, although it's 400 ISO, it's got super fine grain and it's a very high quality film stock. Otherwise, low ISO films are Kodak Ektar 100 and Kodak Portra 160. Generally, the lower the ISO, the more clarity would be in an image. But that is not the only thing that comes into play when we're talking about film stocks. You could have a lower ISO film stock that isn't necessarily better than a higher ISO film stock like Kodak Portra 400. Most budget film stocks haven't got enough quality to produce good details. So you really have to go out and break the bank. Now that's three really important tips, but I do have one more for you. And I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. It wasn't until I used a mediocre zoom lens that I realized just how bad they are, especially when this is just a basic zoom lens for your film camera go out, get a prime lens, and you will take incredible photos that are so much sharper than anything you'll get on a zoom lens. So that's four quick and easy steps to get some really good pictures. 
But have you ever noticed how all of your favorite photographers just take pictures that are way better than yours? Well, you're gonna to wanna to watch the next video to find out how to take your photos to the elite level.